right, this is the second part of section 1.4 for Algebra 2. We've been talking about solving equations and inequalities. Um, let's go back to the equations part. It says, so far every equation we've solved has resulted in one solution. However, this doesn't always happen. Sometimes there are special cases. So there's two situations. When your variable disappears, you have to determine what you have remaining. If you have a true statement or if you have a false statement. If there's a true statement, it means you have infinitely many solutions. If you have a false statement, it means you have no solution. So let's look at some examples of this. We want to solve this and determine what type of solution we have. Is it always going to be true, sometimes true, or never true? Always true means there's an infinite number of solutions. Never true means there's no solution that will work. Sometimes that's when we get a solution. Um, something like we solve and we get x equals 4. Okay. So our variable doesn't disappear. We still are able to find it. So our first example here, combining like terms, we have an 11 and a negative 7. So I'm going to simplify this as 3x plus 4. On this side, I'm going to combine my two like terms, the 6x and the negative 3x, to be 3x plus the 5. And when I solve this, I try to get my variables together. If I subtract 3x from both sides, the variables disappear. So I have 4 equaling 5, but 4 doesn't equal 5. So I get a no solution, which means it is never true. All right, I've got a false statement here. For this next one, combining like terms, the 6x minus 2x is 4x. On this side, the 4 and the 1 adds up to 5. So I have 4x plus 5 equaling 4x plus 5. Getting my x's together, they disappear. But now I'm left with a true statement. 5 does equal 5. That means there's infinitely many solutions. That means it's always true. OK? It doesn't matter what x is, it's always going to work. All right, let's try a couple more examples. Here we have some distributing that we need to do. So we have 2x plus 3x minus 12 equaling 4x minus 12 plus x. Combining like terms, 5x minus 12 equals 5x minus 12. So again, I end up with a true statement, which means infinitely many solutions. We can write it like this. Or we can just use that infinity symbol. That means it's always true. All right. You could pause the recording and try this next one and then turn it back on to check your work. All right. Checking our work. 7x minus 4x is 3x. On this side, we have 3x, the 12 and the negative 8 combined to be a 4. Subtracting 3x from both sides, we get the statement 6 equals 4. And because it is false, there's no solution. It is never true. All right. The last piece that we need to look at here for section 1.4 is solving literal equations. A literal equation is an equation that uses at least two different letters as variables. An example would be something like A equals LW. That's our formula for the area of a rectangle. Area equals length times width. In this case, we would say area is given in terms of length and width. So when they say put it in terms of, whatever you're putting in terms of, that's what you're solving for. All right. Another way we could say that is solve for area. Okay. Now, the nice thing about literal equations is we can rearrange them to solve for something else. So if I wanted to solve for length, for example, I could divide both sides by w. 
if I wanted to solve for width, I could divide both sides by L. So it's the same literal equation, we've just rearranged it for different things. So our next example deals with our converging, converting formula to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit. It says the equation below relates temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, F, and degrees Celsius, C. What is F in terms of C? So we want to solve for F. We want it in terms of C. So we want F by itself, and then the other side will have some expression with the C in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this 5 ninths by timesing both sides by its reciprocal. So I have 9 fifths times C equals, and the 5 ninths and the 9 fifths cancel each other out, and I have F minus 32. And then I can simply add the 32 to the other side. And now I have my equation solved for Fahrenheit. In other words, Fahrenheit is written in terms of Celsius. All right. Two more questions. We are trying to solve for n. n is right here. Okay. I want to get that all by, its, by itself. Right now, there's a 2 thirds getting multiplied to this group in parentheses, and then that's getting multiplied to n. That means to get rid of all those extra pieces, to get n by itself, I need to divide those out. Instead of dividing by 2 thirds, we're going to multiply by its reciprocal. That's an equivalent operation. So I have a plus b in parentheses times n equals 3 halves times b minus c. And then to get n alone, I'm going to divide this to the other side. So really, I'm just dividing both sides by the quantity a plus b. So my final answer then would be n equals 3 times b minus c divided by 2 times a plus b. So I have that equation now solved for n. The last one is an important one. It's more of a new topic for you. What's different about this one is that we are trying to solve for x, and it's in two different spots. So you have to get the x's together. That means I'm going to move terms so that anything that has an x with it is on one side of the equation, and anything that doesn't have an x is moved to the other. So I'm going to first move the cx over to this side. Now, the 3x and the negative cx is going to stay there because they both have x's. But this 5y, I need to subtract to the other side. All right, they're not like terms. I can't put them together. I can just show that they're both on that side. Now, here's the trick. To get this x to be in one spot, I'm going to factor it out. So I'm going to divide an x out of both of these terms. 3x divided by x just leaves a 3. The negative cx, if I divide out the x, leaves me the negative c. And now it's kind of like the previous question, where there's a whole grouping being multiplied to the variable that I'm trying to get alone. So I'm going to divide both sides by that whole grouping. So I end up with x equals negative 6 minus 5y divided by 3 minus c. Okay? Solving literal equations. So you guys are going to work on section 1.4b. It starts on page 30. You are going to do numbers... 29 to 32, 37, 42, 46 to 51, and 55 to 57.